Joining me today is Mike Schwartz. Uh, I think that I get to start saying I have friends of the show. If I do at this point, then Mike certainly qualifies. Uh, Michael is the managing director of iTech Minerals. That's an Australian critical minerals, primarily graphite explorer and developer in Australia that trades on the ASX under the ticker ITM. I've got a small grab bag of questions as, as iTech kind of never really ceases to produce newsworthy updates, but Michael is primarily joining me today to discuss the results from a recently completed, uh, including the drill results themselves, drill campaign at his Lachroma graphite target. Uh, I think, and this is me prefacing and creating a narrative here for people to begin with, but I think this is actually a really good example of how sometimes the market doesn't necessarily click on to what nest, what companies have managed to accomplish with recent drill campaigns. Uh, iTech all along had 40 million tons of graphite as their target goal to make this an economically viable deposit. And in the fall, they actually got punished pretty severely uh, by the market for some disappointing drill results that maybe looked like it was going to pop that bubble. But I would this, this is the part where I think is important for people to understand is that iTech has managed to bounce back in a pretty big way with some very successful drill results as we hopefully are going to demonstrate here in the latter half of that Lachroma drill campaign. So Mike is going to walk us through, this is going to be a, a drill campaign in review uh, in terms of how, what they managed to accomplish, where this happened, and how they're actually uh, and going to end up getting pretty awfully darn close to that magical 40 million ton number with still more prospects that are currently being drill, uh, drilled out. So before I turn over to Mike, with all that said, though, remember, as always, standard disclaimers apply, forward-looking statements, not financial advice, not your financial advisors, et cetera, et cetera. But with that all the way, a little bit of a precursor there. Mike, it's good to talk to you again. How are you? Uh, I'm pretty good, thanks, Matthew. Um, and very glad to be back on and, and talking to you today about, you know, in particular about our uh, drill information from La Croma Central. Yeah, so... We will, we will end this by having a bit of a, like I said, a bit of a grab bag conversation. But I think right now this is going to be fairly, you know, a fairly typical or standard. I'm just going to turn the reins over to you, Mike, if you want to pull up your your your, your screen and share it with us. You just, just share us and walk us through these drill results and, and, and what it means and why they're significant. And, and, and that kind of that redemption story, if I can be a little glib here in terms of, of what it means for the market and what it means for your economic viability. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Matthew. Um, so... Yeah, look, look, you're right. Um, we started off drilling at La Croma Central, um, and we, we, we really targeted the main part of an airborne electromagnetic anomaly, which is, you know, uh, measures conductivity, which graphite is conductive. So you would think that that's what it, it, it is showing you is the, um, where most of the graphite goes, but there was turned out to be a little bit of an offset. Um, and so as we drilled further north into the main part of the anomaly, uh, the graphite did tend to to thin a little bit um and so we've reported those results to the market market was a little bit disappointed and that was reflected in our share price but um as explorers do we looked to well what, what could be going wrong here so we started drilling to the south um where that anomaly dissipated a bit but the graphite mineralization started to build and and was quite substantial so there the results we have more recently reported to the market and you know we really hope um that, that from that those substantial drill intersections we're getting there, we can build up and and start to hit that forty million ton target that uh, we were we were hoping for at the start, and that is now becoming a real possibility with those those latest results. But but if, if I may, I'll, I'll go through uh, the presentation, give you a bit of a background um, on where I tech has come from um, and how we're building our our resources and our projects up through to that that forty million ton target at La Croma Central. Um, so we're, we're based here in, in Australia, and uh, in particular South Australia. Uh, we started out with taking over a project from a company called Archer Materials, and we inherited a, a global graphite resource, which was somewhat higher grade. It was about 8.5 million tonnes at, at 9%, and that was over about three different uh, deposits, all, all on the Air Peninsula. And, and we were in the same location um, as other investors may be familiar with a company called Renascor and their Sivior graphite deposit. So we were in the same geology uh, and in the same, uh, um, I guess, geographic location. Uh, it's, it's a great location, good infrastructure, plenty of renewable energy through wind and solar through the area that you can use to start to develop these projects with really good green uh, credentials. Um, so, yeah, you know, it was probably about a year and two months today that we started drilling on the Air Peninsula. Um, and we've been drilling pretty, pretty solidly over that time. Um, 
So we started out at, at Sugarloaf, uh, which was a, a very large target, and did some preliminary exploration drilling there, managed to, to double the size of the, the strike of the graphite. But our, our real main focus was on La Croma Central, uh, and we knew we had one drill hole into it, which was about, I think, um, 60, 70 metres at uh, 6.8%, but we really didn't know how extensive that, that target was going to be. So our aim was to drill that out over the coming year. And, you know, I'm pleased to say that we have we initially completed about 6,500 metres of RC drilling over, uh, I think it was about 3.7 kilometres, and that led us in to then focus on a central zone where that graphite mineralisation was, the, was the, uh, the thickest, and we've drilled now nearly 20,000 metres of resource drilling over about 1.7 kilometres in that, that central zone. And that's what I'll focus on on talking about today. But we've pretty much set out and completed to do everything that we said we would do over 12 months ago. So what, what have we done in the last year? Well, we've really de-risked our, our projects. We've proven um, that we can produce battery anode material from our, from our projects. So uh, how do we get into to production? So we know we, we have a have a deposit uh, of 8.5 million tonnes at 9%, uh, but that's really not big enough. We wanted to get that up to uh, the, the, the 40 million tonnes because with an with a 8.5 million tonne deposit, uh, that gives us about a 10-year mine life. And when we go and we want to get off-take agreements from our potential uh, partners, they want to see that we can produce a product for about 40 years. Then they know that we can produce a nice, consistent product for a long lead time. Then they'll in invest in, in, in our material because they can uh, be sure of supply for a decent time frame. So um, while we can show that we can do, do it for 10 years, we can't at the moment show that we can do it for 40 years. So that was really um, why we wanted to go and do the drilling at La Croma. But at the moment, with our, with our 10 year mine life, we know we, we've got a mine, we've got a permitted um, uh, mining lease. Um, we, we, we can transport to that to our concentrator um, that we have uh, uh, developed and we have engineered. Uh, we can produce that concentrate at 94%. We know we can spherinize it and we know we can purify it to above 99.9%. So our flow sheet has all been proven uh, for Campuna um, in, in, in principle. We, we've done all of that, that background work. So the, really the next step is where are we going to build our, our resource tonnes to get that greater than 40 million tonnes? So this is a bit of a complicated flow sheet, but there are, are two ways we wanted to do that. And this is where the drilling over the last year ha has focused on. So that top flow sheet is to go to La Croma. Uh, so we went to La Croma because we knew we had good metallurgy. The preliminary metallurgy we did knew that we could produce a greater than 90% concentrate through standard, um, through, through standard metallurgical, uh, flow sheet parameters, which is just doing a, you know, a, a, um, a rougher flotation and then cleaner flotation. So we're redoing that at the moment and we're at the very end stages of that metallurgy. We're just waiting on the final assay results. Uh, to confirm that that um, that material is is above that ninety four percent concentrate, but it's looking really nice, uh, and we want to get eighty percent recoveries. Um, so we've got a good chance of doing that with La Croma, um, and now our our target is to get the uh, the resource coming in at somewhere around about thirty plus million tons because we already have that eight and a half million tons at at our existing Campina resource. So that, that's kind of the, the, the target for La Croma. So that's, uh, we're finishing up our, our drilling at, at La Croma Central. Um, we might, we've, we've headed to La Croma North for a bit. We might be coming back to do a few more infill holes. Um, but yeah, uh, very close to having all that data go off to the independent consultants to calculate that resource. Now, the, 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 the sleeping, I guess, um, unknown is Sugarloaf. And that's, the, the drilling that we did uh, right at the beginning where we drilled about 4.3 kilometres of, of graphite and, and we had intersections up to 26% uh, in that um, in that target. So we have a have an expiration target of above 154 million tonnes at 7 to 12% for Sugarloaf. So that, that's a, a sort of like a sleeping monster for us. But what we need to do with Sugarloaf is get that metallurgical uh, test work right. So... 
that's a, a, a longer lead time project that we're doing with a couple of different organisations, um, and and that's well underway at the moment. So we're hoping to, um, to to get some results, you know, in the next couple of months. I would hope to see whether that metallurgy at sugar loaf is likely to work. So when we can get Lacroma um, uh, resource done, uh, and then know that we can start to get the metallurgy for sugar loaf. Uh, working, we can start feeding that into our back into our feasib feasibility studies. Okay, so now I'll focus in on the the Lacroma prospect and the drill results we've had there recently. Uh, so I'll I'll start at Lacroma Central um, and work from the north uh, and then work our way down to the south. So this is about a one point seven kilometer strike length, uh, and these were the markets you were you're talking about. Sorry, these are the results. Uh, Matthew, that you're talking about that probably disappointed the market and and put into to doubt whether we could reach that that 30 to 40 million ton target for Lacroma. So, you know, there's th still okay. You know, we, we've got like 20 to, to 30 metre intersections at, at 7 to 8 percent up in the north, uh, but they look relatively skinny when you uh, when you start comparing them where uh, it does get really really thick in the central part of the deposit. So we'll start heading further to the south now. Uh, and you can see it, see it starts to thicken up. So you go from 20 to 30 metres thickness up to sort of 60 plus metres with you know, intervals uh, at um, you know, 20 to, to 30 metres at about 8 to 9 percent in some of that material. And then as you go further south, this is where we get to the really nice juicy material that's going to add significant tonnes uh, within our resource. So we're looking at anywhere up to 100 metre th true thicknesses here. At about five to seven percent, with twenty to, to forty meter tree thicknesses of eight to nine percent. Uh, and look, it's quite often in, in graphite deposits you have a lot of waste material. You don't have that at this central part of Lacroma because it, this is solid mineralization of you know eighty to hundred meters of, of of grade all the way through with no waste material. The other thing I wanted to point out is that you know, there is mineralization from surface and it's dipping at about 30 degrees to the east. So we're in, when, when we, if, if and when we mine this material, we're going to be mining all grade material from the surface. So it's heading further south. So now we're about, I would say, uh, 900 metres to a, a kilometre and it's still nice and thick. So combined, we're getting, you know, 60, 80 metres of solid mineralisation still uh, at this area. And then this, from here on south, it, it was the unknown. And we drilled this out quite quickly uh, toward the, towards the end of last year to see whether um, it was continuous for the, for the full 1.7 kilometres. Now, and I was pleased to say while it wasn't, you know, 60 to 80 metres, it still continues at decent grades at, at the 20 to 30 metre thicknesses um, in this southern section. So... When we start combining um, that full 1.7 um, kilometres from north to south where we go from, you know, 20, 30 metres to 100 metre thickness down back to 20, 30 metres, um, we're quite confident um, we're going to get very close to that um, 30 plus million tonne target uh, for, for, for the Chroma Central, which is what we said we were going to do and what we wanted uh, to do for Lacroma Central, so uh, I think that that reality is is there for us um, and is going to you know help us build up our, our forty million ton target with um, uh, our, our existing resources at, at Campuna. Um, so the next bit I wanted to jump into was a bit of a three D model, and uh, just excuse me while I I jump over to my three D software and I'll show you what this. Um, this potential resource looks like in 3D. Okay, so this is the, the 3D software here, and this is the, the area of Lacroma Central. So the first thing I'll I'll show is the, the airborne electromagnetic. So why did we target the drilling at Lacroma Central? And you can see in this central part, the, this is the anomaly. Um, hopefully you can see the cursor on my screen. Uh, this is the anomaly that we knew we had one drill hole that went, I think it was 68 metres at 6.8% or 70 metres at 6.8%. So we knew there was a fair thickness of, of graphite under this um, this anomaly. Uh, and the next thing I will throw in is all the drilling that we've done. 
Um, so you can see quite detailed drilling. Uh, and as we look at that in 3D, you can see we did it detailed and went further to the north because that's where the best part of the anomaly was. But as we went further north, it did tend to, to thin a little bit. Um, so what we then did was, was drill further down here to the south where it, the anomaly does, uh, isn't quite so significant, but we know the mineralization, uh, it thickens up and, and then it's still quite consistent all the way, uh, through to the south. So we're going to be doing a few more infill holes further here to the south, uh, to, to, cause we know that it thickens up out towards the, 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 the east a little bit here. But to give you a, a better idea of what this looks like, I'll zoom in a little bit. And I've put the grades on. So what you can see with these drill holes, if we go underground, is so uh, the, the blue is the background. So that's below 2%. Uh, the greens are above 2%. And when you go up to the oranges and the reds, that's in the 7 to 10% to sort of range. So we'll, we'll zoom into that central part. And very hard to see here, but you can see that there's significant amounts of material that is above that five to seven percent and up to ten percent um, within the 3D model. So now it's it's very hard to sort of make sense of that. So what I've done is I've put the sections on uh, and now you can see where uh, we believe our sort of five to seven seven percent plus zone so is it the chrome uh, is it the chroma central? So remember this whole zone from up up here um, in the north down to here is 1.7 kilometers long. So as we zoom around, you can see there's a very significant body of graphite mineralization in the central part, which is in the 80 to 100 meters true thickness of material that goes well above five to seven percent. Um, so yeah, our, our resource calculation will be looking targeting this area um, all the way down through down to it about here, which is about 1.7 kilometers. So as I spin that around, you can get a, a good idea for how extensive that that graphite mineralization is. Can I, I'll just interrupt you for a second and make this a question that came up. That 2% now, is that waste rock or will that be, will that be fed and will that be processed? Um, so 2% is the cutoff um, that we're using, um, we believe at the moment for our resource modeling um, that we're doing internally. What the independent guys do, they'll have to de determine their own cutoff. But we've based that on uh, a couple of projects here in Australia. Uh, one is Renascore's project at Sivior. They're using a 2% cut off and then we're using um, international graphite have used a two percent cut off as well so um, that would be stuff that would be put through and processed mm -hmm. yeah excellent so there you go and one more thing here I'll make a point that you know I think some people that are listening will of course know your story and, and be familiar but uh, for a lot of people that are maybe more familiar with with precious metals and, and industrial minerals such as graphite are a bit more opaque but you know grade isn't necessarily king it's metwork that is king right that you can have a lower grade resource and if the network is clean and, and simple and pure and, and like you've expressed expressed here with the chroma it is far more important to me I, I can think it won't name the company but I can think of a company in the world that has 70 percent graphite but will never be battery grade just simply because of the network right so anyway just to, just as an aside there yeah yeah look, look, absolutely that, that's right Matthew and what the, the reason we really liked the chroma central and why we targeted it initially was we knew um, that the network was a, a very simple flow sheet and that comes down um, to trying to put ourselves into that that lowest quartile of cost for producing graphite because in these markets where China is you know, putting a lot of synthetic graphite onto the market and is depressing the, the graphite prices at the mo moment, to have any chance of getting a, a project into production, you're going to have to be a really low-cost producer. And the Chroma has all the hallmarks uh, of, of being a, a low-cost producer. And I'll, I can go in, go through why, you know, I, I believe that is for the Chroma. And probably looking at this, you know, this 3D model at the moment is a good way um, to demonstrate it is that A, We've got um, mineralization from surface. So we can, we don't have to have high costs of stripping away waste rocket at the beginning. We can get into production straight away and start producing uh, a product from, you know, pretty much day one. The other thing is that this um, central part of the, 
um, of the potential resource is where, where it's about 100 metres true thickness is we can have very wide mining benches. So we can have a mining bench which is about 75 metres wide in ore mm. from day one at surface and the foot wall uh, dips at about 30 degrees down towards the east. So as we cut back, we're just taking 75 metre benches, bench after bench after bench, um, in ore after ore after ore. So it's very consistent. Um, it's it's weathered all the way down to 100 metres, which means that there's a very good chance this material could be free dig. So we haven't got high costs of, of drill and blast, and we don't have high costs of having to grind this material. And then the metallurgical uh, test work we, we're hoping uh, will show that it'll be very fleet, free and easy flotation to get to that 94% con. So all of, all of your high cost processes, um, uh, are absent, we believe, from, from, from Lacroma. So, uh, yeah, you know, it, 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 it's something that we're really going to target at Lacroma is to get into that lowest quartile, lowest cost producer. Um, and like, like I said, all, all the, the hallmarks are there for, be, for being able to do that at Lacroma Central. And if I may, while you while we transition to the next idea here, but it almost sounds like geologically, it's almost kind of uh, front load of the economics a bit for you too, right? So you have those nice improved your, your your boilerplate numbers, your 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 your, your headline numbers, your NPV, etc. Will will be aided by the fact that you yeah work from surface, no strip, and you know seventy five meter wide bench, nice nice long uh, economic kind of go at the first you know six twelve months etc. of production too, which seems like a positive. That's it because the things that that, that break. Uh, these kind of industrial mineral projects are when the metallurgy doesn't work uh, and you've got um, high costs at the beginning of a project. So you want to remove uh, th- those two risks. So, um, you know, wh- while we're still waiting for the detailed metallurgy at the chroma, the, the early stage metallurgy, no, we know we can produce a you know, 94% con with 80% recoveries. Um, and we, we know that we, we've got a good chance of you know, mining this material and, and producing income right from uh, from from day one, so those those largest risk factors for these industrial mineral projects seem to be removed from uh, from Lacroma. So yeah, looking very positive for us uh, at this stage. Excellent. No, sorry, not not to interrupt you, Michael. Let you continue on here. Okay. No, no. So, so that that's really where we're at with Lacroma Central. I'll, I'll 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 touch on where else we can add resources after Lacroma Central. Um, and one of those is going to be hopefully Sugarloaf, um, which is the sleeping giant for us. Uh, and then I'll touch on Lacroma North and the drilling we're, we're doing up there. So, uh, first, uh, Sugarloaf in particular. So we, we inherited Sugarloaf as a project from Archie Materials when we started up about three years ago. Uh, and at that stage, um, we knew they had graphite mineralization over a strike length of about, uh, two kilometers. Um, we had a fair idea that we could extend that further to the south. So we did, uh, at the beginning of this year, um, sorry, the beginning of last year, um, uh, about another, I think it was about another 2,000 metres of drilling further to the south and were able to more than double the strike length of, of that graphite mineralisation. And we got some pretty nice uh, intersections um, at a pretty decent grade. So just to go through some of those, like 28 metres at 15% um, with a, a 18 metres at 11%. Um, you know, some of the other ones uh, that, that I really like were 17 metres at, 6.4, 6 metres at 5.3, uh, but further down, 6 metres at 7.8, uh, 10 metres at, at 4, um, 27 metres at, at 7.7, but then, you know, getting down a little bit deeper, 13 metres at 26%. So we know there's some some really high-grade material um, at Sugarloaf. Um, one, of my, one of the best holes we drilled there um, was nearly a 100-metre intersection that was broken up into two Two intervals, 48 metres at 7.2%, at 7.2%, and that was only from five metres just below the surface, and then 14, sorry, 49 metres at 16% from 68 metres. So pretty nice, thick, high-grade intersections at Sugarloaf over a very large distance. Um, so that that really supports our exploration target for that 4.3 kilometres of 158 to 264 million tonnes at 7 to 12%. So... This is why I call it the sleeping giant because if we can bring this into our resources, um, it's going to, you know, be a, a hundred plus year mine life type material. But the, 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 the but, the, the, the if for this project is the, the metallurgy. Now it's a, it's a fine flat graphite, which is fine for 
and I mean fine as in good for <laughs> battery anode material, uh, being fine as flake size as well. Um, but the the problem is our normal flotation techniques uh, don't get really good recoveries uh, for this material for the reason we think is that it's it's locked up uh, because it's so fine with some of the gang material. Now, we're going to have to apply some novel flotation methodologies. Now, we're lucky in that we've got a $1.1 million government-funded project to, to crack the metallurgy on this project, and that's about probably four or five months into into that now, and we're starting to, to see some results. So I, I would hope in the next couple of months we'll start to see um, some results from that metallurgy and see whether we, we can crack that code. But we've got some very smart people working on it. Um, if I may, not to interrupt, yeah. Mike, sorry, is there, this just seems like a natural time to ask that. That was on my list is the sugar loaf met. I mean, do you, can you provide any color on that? Is there, obviously you can't provide material information, even if you do or don't have it, but additional color in terms of just early days indeterminate, but are there positive results so far? I mean, our doors aren't closed, so to speak, yet? No, so nothing we've done is shut shut any of the doors. It hasn't. Um, uh, so this is not going to be possible. Everything we've done so far is leading um, to us being able to um, produce, you know, a, 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 a material uh, that will be suitable for battery added material. And the, the the reason I say that is that there are a number of other projects with companies like Tauga uh, in in Sweden that have very similar material that it, that is very fine. Um, the traditional flotation methods didn't work initially, but they were able to crack the code. Now, I don't know how they did it, uh, but they've been able to do it, um, and that gives me great confidence that we, we will be able to, to do it too. Now, it might just be the fact we have to grind this material um, up to a very fine grind size. Now, that hasn't been done at Sugarloaf yet. It might be that simple. Um, so we're in the process of doing the, that kind of test work, Um but when you have a very finely ground material, you have problems with flotation. But they have this really fancy equipment at UniSA um, that is has is specialist material at getting fine material to float. They they develop this um, this technology on molybdenite, um, but there is no reason why it won't work on on graphite. So we're going through that process uh, at the moment, uh, and we have high hopes that yeah we'll be able to have a positive outcome for, for sugar life. The, 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 the other uh, but that comes with this is how costly that process mm-hmm. is going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so we don't know that yet. Um, if we have to grind it uh, up a lot, it will take a fair bit of energy. But the positive that comes out of being able to recover fine material is that we can then apply this to Campuna and Lacroma and recover that 20% we would otherwise lose and have significant cost recoveries from those two projects as well. So we, um, we, we're we losing 20% at, at Campuna at the moment. So it'd be, it'd be great to be able to, to, to recover that material because that's free material. Um, this technology we develop at Sugarloaf uh, has a high likelihood of us being able to recover that material from both uh, Campuna and, and Lacroma, and that all adds to the the good economics of, of all of our projects. Mm-hmm. So then the other, um, I, I guess, area that we're looking to potentially add more resources is up to Lacroma North. So if we have a look where our current resource calculation is going on is here at Lacroma Central. Uh, we're drilling here at Lacroma North. Now, I can't say too much because we haven't released anything to market other than that I can say we are intersecting graphite in our, our drill holes up there. And we knew that we would because some of the historical drill holes intersected uh, graphite mineralization um, up there. So we've, we've tested drilling at the moment to where those where those red dots were. They are the current historical drill holes that we knew were where there was mineralization. We've We've redrilled some of those and and got the the graphite mineralization as expected, uh, and we're moving now our uh, further up to the north to this main part of the of the AM anomaly. So we'll be dr- continuing that drilling over I, I would say uh, towards the end of March, um, and in that time we'll come back and and uh, drill a few more holes down in that southern part of Lacroma Central where you could see in the three D model it looked a bit thinner in the south, but from the assays we're getting down there, it's looking like it's um, probably thickening up towards the, the Easter bit in that southern area. So we'll, we'll test that with a couple of infill holes as well. 
Uh, and then if we get time, and this is not guaranteed, but if we get time, we'll jump over here to um, Bellambar and test this very obvious, very high um, a AEM anomaly. Um, but that's uh, y yet to be known whether we can get on the on the ground there. Um, but yeah, so like we, we've spent twelve months drilling at the Chroma, um, and we're trying to prove up, I guess, a bit of blue sky for where we will go next to, to keep adding resource tons um, for our for our project. But you know, I, I would hope that. We would get to that that magical forty million uh, ton number uh, at the Chroma Central, and then anything you know um, above that is just the, the cream on the top. Mm -hmm. If I may, while we're on the slide as well, just uh, I'll, I'll take these questions off my list as well. So, just you know, quick, easier follow-ups here. How many meters are you expecting to put the, the new La Chroma North? How many meters? Uh, what are we expecting holes in meters there? Um, so. I think we've done in the order of about uh, 30 drill holes up there, um, averaging about 80-odd 80, 80 metres. Um, I would expect us to do in the order of three to 4,000 metres, uh, and that's sort of the exploration-type style program. Uh, we did about 2,000 metres down at, at Sugarloaf, yeah, so I, I, I'd probably say about double that. Um, and that'll be you know, obviously flexible based on on the results that we get. But mm -hmm. to adequately test that five kilometer strike in an, uh, with an exploration approach, um, I would say yeah, that the, the three to four thousand meter uh, kind of target up there is that enough to get to inferred uh, well, that, that, that probably won't get us uh, a resource up there, but it'll give us an idea of whereabouts we could do resource drilling uh, yeah, um, further down the track. And then I guess just a little, couple of follow-up. When, when might we see initial drill results? And then that's part one. And then part two, when might we see uh, network begin on La Croma North as well? Uh, so with the network um, on uh, La Croma North, we, um, we, we probably don't have plans for doing that until we know that there's a, a location we will be able to do additional, additional resource drilling. So... Um, mm -hmm. I guess to go, to go back and answer your first question, the results for the Chroma North, um, we, we, we're we getting the last of the results for our infill drilling at the Chroma Central right at the moment. Um, I would say in the the next two to three weeks, we'll have results for the Chroma North, uh, and that will, over the coming months, we'll work out um, whether there will be the possibility of defining uh, more resources up there, but that will take additional drilling. Uh, if we... If we decide, yes, we can do more resource drilling at the Chroma North, at that point we'll do metallurgy uh, because there's no point in doing metallurgy unless you know that you can, you've can. you got the chance of, of, of doing um, resource drilling. Um, but, but I guess uh, at the Chroma Central, the metallurgy there, we're, we're just waiting on the final assays for the, um, the, the cleaner flotation, which is the having cleaned it up to the the highest grade you can. So I would say in the next couple of weeks, we'll have the, the final results for the first pass metallurgy at the Chroma Central. Awesome. And that's required for a jaw compliant resource to show that you can produce a, you know, a, a high grade con with good recoveries. No, excellent. Thank you. So yeah, the, uh, really what we're working forward uh, towards at the moment is getting all of that data at Lacroma Central into our in independent resource consultant. So we've got the, the RC rig drilling at Lacroma North and then coming back to Lacroma Central to do a bit of infill drilling. We have a diamond rig drilling at Lacroma Central. Uh, that's on its third hole of five. And the reason we need to get diamond core is because we need to get density measurements. We need to do quality control. So we're twinning holes and we're also... Um, uh, I guess uh, testing some of the the extensions for the deposit with the the the, the diamond core uh, and going a bit deeper than we would have been able to do with the RC. So um, that that diamond drilling will be wrapping up in the next uh, three to four weeks. Um, assays for that um, are due probably uh, you know another uh, three to four weeks after that, and then um, you know the the resource coming up. Um, I'm hoping um, around the, the May time frame. So yeah, short short term short term catalysts, as they say, right? So yeah, yeah. No. yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. Summary slide: uh, Lacroma Central. Uh, I think I've I've been through all of this. Um, 
You know, we've got uh, the, the, the metallurgical test work, maiden resource coming up for the Chroma Central. Um, uh, and then if that all proves well, we'll go back and, and do resource infield drilling and hopefully up that, upgrade that resource maybe in the second half of this year. Uh, and then those results coming through for the Chroma North, to, which will be, be exploration drilling for mainly in the first half of this year. But we'll have to get all, all those results back before we decide whether we go up there and, and do resource drilling uh, at the Chroma North. Uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, whether we do any metallurgical test work up there. But, you know, there's a good inference if the, the metallurgy for the Chroma Central comes back as positive that there's no different, it would be any reason for, for that, that northern part of the extension of mineralisation. Um, but and then the, the really exciting part coming up, you know, hopefully in the, the next couple of months and definitely in the first half of this year is those metallurgical test work results for Sugarloaf because if they come back as positive, we've got the the potential to to bring in massive tons at a good grade with our you know, our exploration target of you know uh, uh, plus well plus a hundred to two hundred million tons of material at, at Sugarloaf, um, so that. That'll be uh, ongoing. And then, you know, the positive feedback of that for recovering the fine material at, at La Croma and Campuna as well. So, yeah, that, that pretty much sums it up um, for where we're at at, at, at La Croma Central and the other, other two projects. So, yeah, uh, the, the, the resource will, will be the, the, the test for, um, you know, whether we get close to that, that 40 million tonne target um, and then feed that back into our, now our economic models and, and see how we fare for, for coming in as a potential low cost producer at the Chroma Central. Well, yeah, thanks, Mike. And I think that that serves to be a really good kind of well-rounded and relatively brief sort of overview here. I just have a couple of questions. And like I say, we kind of managed to knock some off my list. And I think that it's important for people to recognize there's a couple of things here. One, I want to talk about potential for pilot plant, pilot plant production rather, pardon me, but I think you just referenced it yourself. I think anybody, anybody who's following the space, and I'll put a link up. I mean, China is, again, as they do with these critical minerals, uh, trying to establish a very powerful and strong monopoly over, over top of graphite. And like you, you, meant, you, re you referenced it yourself, right? The synthetic graphite coming out of China is kind of fundamentally redefining the international graphite market, you know, whether we like it or not. And up until if and when there are, you know, significant government subsidies that come into the sector, that's just the reality I have to deal with, right? And so I think that, you know, you reference it yourself, that you your goal is lowest quartile. Can you maybe just, you know, okay, maybe I not to steal your thunder, but with all of my preamble, but do you want to just discuss this importance here, right, and your confidence in this, in your lowest quartile, the, the, the future-facing necessity of being cheap, 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 and, and, and that ability for you to achieve that. Yeah, look, look, absolutely, and and that really, really is our has been our aim from the start. So um, we 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 did an internal uh, scoping study for um, our, our Campuna project and um, realized, you know, ten years of mine life. Um, at 50,000 tonnes per annum production uh, doesn't make you the lowest cost producer. So we needed to increase the number of, the, of resources um, and also get, I guess, an ore body with better characteristics um, than what we had at Campuna. So Campuna, um, just to, I guess, step back a bit, was a relatively steep ore body. Uh, and as you mine it, you've got to remove a lot of waste um, to, to mine down. So it's pretty much vertical. Um, so we were looking for an ore body which... Um, was very weathered, uh, had mineralization at surface and was shallow dipping and had really, very nice flotation characteristics. Um, and we had this one drill hole at La Croma that we knew, um, had the potential to do that. So as we've drilled out La Croma, it's proven that that has, has all held up. So, um, you know, as I mentioned before, we want to have something that we're mining and producing material from with very low capital costs. Um, right from the start. So that means you don't want to have to drill and blast, which we, we don't think we're going to have to do it at La Croma. It could be uh, free dig. Um, there's a good chance of that. Um, we don't have to want to grind it up to be able to liberate the graphite. So um, there's a good chance there will be minimal, if, it, if it, any grinding at all, because this material at La Croma is weathered quite strongly down to, down to 100 metres. So when, when we drill it with an RC rig, it just comes out as powder. All the way down to 100 meters, and the graphite just floats. You know, as as we test the graphite by sifting it into a bucket of water, it just all floats straight to the surface. So, th this means that you're not investing a lot in your your capital costs right at the start to produce a um, 
a mine where you've got to get the material out of ground out of the ground down to 100 meters, and then you're not investing in a lot of capital costs to produce a high grade concentrate. Um, you can do that relatively cheaply. So that's where our our full focus is on on I guess concentrating on that that Lacroma style of resource. And the reason we headed north from Lacroma Central uh, to Lacroma North is the same geolog- geological characteristics are, apply there as well. Um, so so you know ho- hopefully that answers your question. If um, if if we can maintain all those geological characteristics um, and I guess the costs of um, producing a, a, a high grade concentrate um, and, and put those into our, our flow sheet and then into our scoping study. Uh, that's what we hope that the investors will see. Uh, ITEC will become, you know, a, a low cost producer of graphite because to compete in this market, that's what we, we're going to have to do. Um, you, you need to be in that, 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 that low cost producing environment to be able to get into production because any uh, mistakes that you make or any unexpected higher costs as you're getting into production can really derail your project. So you mitigate those risks, then you become uh, a low risk producer. And you talk about production and getting into production. I think this is, you know, I, we, I said it on, on an investor phone call you had a couple months back, and this is part of the story that was new to me then. And I think it's actually was it struck me then and it strikes me now as an important component to this though is that you and maybe i'm just behind the times and i'll you know i'll fully cop to that if that's the case but you know you have you actually have a legitimate pathway to pilot plant production pardon me i think i stumbled over that last time too where you know this is not a copper porphyry where it's going to cost you two billion dollars to get into production that, that you that it actually is an opportunity for if you wanted to yourself, iTech, to, to take this to production yourself on a pilot plant basis uh, and on two different on streams of not incorrect, right, on the on concentrate modular and the spherinization purification or purification spherinization uh, modular plants. And correct me where I have the details wrong if you need to, but can you just touch on that? I mean, in terms of costs and, and, and why this is maybe an important detail for this story? Yeah, sure. So I, I've looked at other projects um, and, you know, capital costs have gone up a bit since um, these projects have, have made their – their figures public but for, for pilot plant um concentrate um type setups for the capital cost of that um for for pretty reasonable flow throughs you're, you're looking at sort of 15 to, to 20 million to um be able to you know to, to get a system set up to produce a, a a concentrate um you can you can you can toll treat it like if you get somebody else that's got all the facilities in place you could do it do it for four to five million um, and, and get enough material to send it out to all of your potential offtake partners to get it all tested. But what we would prefer to do was to invest in the, the capital in a pilot plant so that we know how to process the material. We have the expertise in house and we are running, um, this, this material on the ground and, and we've got the staff and the expertise to be able to do it so that as we go from pilot plant stage up to, uh, full production stage, um, and, and, and these plants can be modular. You know, you can, you can add modular material as you buy these, these modules out of China. Um, we've got the people that in house that, that can do all that. So you've got the long, so the shortest lead times to be able to, to ramp up to, to full scale production as the, as the market supporter. So that, that, that's really our model is to develop that expertise in house and not outsource, uh, a lot of that expertise because when it comes to, to implementing it, then you can get caught short with finding that 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 skilled labour to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. And so, what's your the tons per annum, or if that, that fifteen to twenty million per, to produce a pilot plant for concentrate? What's what's your annual tonnage that you would produce from there? I look, I, I don't have those numbers off the top of my head at the moment. So, um, but look, every every uh, potential offtake partner would need uh, in excess of a hundred tons. Uh, of concentrate to do the full scale testing, so it, it'd be of that order. You know, if you wanted to have you know five hundred thousand tons uh, of material to be able to you know have enough material to to put out to all potential offtake partners, but it, it, it ramps up in scale as you go. You go from like a few kilograms at the start. If it passes their testing criteria, they want fifty kilos. Then they want a hundred kilos. Then they want you know a ton. Then they want a hundred tons. So it, it's like a you know, a, a year-long process to 
uh, go through all of the, the testing to make sure that it meets all their criteria. You know, and I've told this story probably a million times that you know it was the Samsung Odyssey that the phones that exploded and you weren't allowed to take on planes because the the the, the testing hadn't been done. Um, that's why there's this, this long lead time and and testing to make sure that your material uh, meets all the, the 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 required safety criteria. That's the first time I've heard that. So it's thanks to graph, <laughs> thanks to that quality control. We don't have exploding phones on planes anymore. It's yeah. good to know. Okay. <laughs> so and that's one of the thing about you know the the the, the graphite that's produced in the, the Western uh, markets is we 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 are known for producing quality material and and consistently meeting uh, that quality quite criteria and being able to to prove with with, with our dual compliance, um, being able to ensure that we can produce that that quality for a, a long time so that. Our potential offtake mar- markets and, and partners that you know are, are predominantly into the, the North American markets, um, they can be assured of that. Um, you know, we've got the possibility of re- re- using renewable energy, you know, uh, and, and meeting all those top notch uh, ESG requirements that perhaps some of the Chinese producers uh, aren't doing as well as you know some of the quality as well. Mm-hmm. The, the you know sometimes we kind of wheel and gnash our teeth about maybe a little bit too much regulatory procedure or bureaucratic mess, but that's also the flip side of the advantage of that is that that, that high quality control aspect of that. Um, last there, last there question. To, there was one oh, another point that I wanted to add to that. I noticed recently that ben, Benchmark were producing a new North American um, minus hundred uh, mesh uh, graphite index, uh, which was taking into account the I guess the increased costs of competing with China. And and meeting all of those ESG criteria and um, uh, and supplying into the North American market. So that's an interesting move now uh, that I think the industry uh, is coming to understand that there's going to be a premium that needs to be paid um, to to you know to to, to be able to uh, feed your material into the North American and in European markets. So that, that that index is getting developed now, so that, that it's showing. You know the cost of material from China versus the cost uh, uh, from from the the Western markets as well. Um, but you know, for us targeting into the, the the lowest cost producer, we would like to be able to you know feed into to both of those markets, but compete very effectively within that you know that, that, that North American index. Starting to see echoes of all the, the, the headache and consternation with nickel in that conversation there uh, these days. Uh, maybe Mike, at this point. Uh, would be very interesting continuing that, but I think that maybe better serve. Maybe I'll have you back on. We can just do a, a graphite chat one of these days, and then we can discuss, you know, chase our chase our tails a bit on that regard. Um, yeah. th- just to, not to put a pin in this too rapidly, but just circling to the end here, just uh, one more question, and I'll let you kind of have at it after that as well, if you like, if with any final thoughts. But you I also noticed just kind of and going through the news releases for you recently that you, you Prodigy Gold, your Reynolds Rain acquisition, uh, I think is only you know a few tens of thousands of dollars, so hardly breaking the bank but you did acquire 100 percent uh, interest with one percent royalty on on three tenements in the northern territory looks like a whole host of minerals which i thought was kind of interesting and again you know that's the kind of conversation i have over a beer but copper gold uranium rare earths lithium and all these things uh potentially looking about we're lurking about is there one in particular that you're after or you know is there an order of priority that you're chasing or why why did you particularly take this these land packages so um, yeah, great, great question. It, look, it was an opportunity that came up with that was almost too good to miss. You know, it was very well priced. Uh, came through, uh, I guess, uh, a contact that had some familiarity with the ground uh, and, and had been on the ground and, and really liked it. A, a contact that I I, I, I trust um, and have worked with in the in the past. Um, so, and I started these discussions back when, before I guess the lithium bubble had burst quite a little bit. Uh, quite more than a little bit recently, so I was initially looking at it at it, at it for lithium, and it's got some pretty interesting lithium potential. Um, so we we're still going to be looking at, at that because it is large scale lithium potential. Um, but um, the other thing is is that it's very close to the Nolans Bore uh, rare earth element deposit. It's only about probably fifty k's away, um, and that is very enriched in neodymium and praseodymium, which are some some of the the, the two most sought after uh, rare earth elements. Now, we did have a, a rare earth component to our projects with the, the clay hosted rare earths, and that's been developing. Um, but I guess there's been a lot of projects that come out of Brazil, out of Brazil recently um, that are true ionic projects that are they're very hard to compete against with in the clay hosted arena. Now, ours looked like it wasn't ionic. It was more 
um, locked up in some other minerals, so would have higher processing costs. So we were looking to, I guess, keep our rare earth projects alive as an alternative to graphite. And this um, project at Reynolds Range is a, is a really good project to do that. You know, it's um, it's got all the right geological characteristics for having uh, hard rock, um, rare earth element um, projects like Nolan's Ball within them that are, that are rich in the right kind of elements. So um, it's really, I guess, having a few more strings to our bow um, and it's a low cost acquisition uh, and it's in areas that we have experience with in, in exploring. So, you know, I've, I've explored in the Northern Territory before, you know, our other geologists have as well. So, you know, um, it's the, the graphite is it, definitely still our main focus. But while I guess we're handing over a lot of our uh, data to the independent experts to do the resource calculation, we've got the opportunity to go up there and um, and, and bring in a few more projects to the portfolio that can add some real value to iTech. So we don't want our guys sitting here in the office twiddling their thumbs for, for too long. We want them out there in the field, and this is a project they can do that on uh, while while the chrome is being you know by looked at by the independent experts. Yeah, and fair. And, and, and I'll ask this next que- next question fully cognizant, you know, full recognition that that additional projects lifeblood of a junior explorer in devco right that that's having like you said a few more a few more arrows in your quiver sort of thing but do you risk distraction i mean you know it sounds like lacroma is on the path to something meaningful here do you risk distraction from that when you take on not just another project but an entirely different sort of project i know you already have rare earth three so you have that rare earth experience and i mean really fundamentally and bluntly i mean i mean and, 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 unfair question or not, but I mean, should investors be worried and read between the lines that maybe Lacroma is not, not happening, you know, the, the, taking on these additional projects? You know, a great, great question, you know, and, and that was something that I, I thought, that, you know, that I wanted to communicate to the market as when we did announce to these projects that I wanted to very much re-emphasize that Lacroma is our is our main game and, and is our, our, main, our, main, our main target and our main focus forward. And, and the reason that I... I believe we can still be competitive, uh, as we've touched on before, is because of our, our focus on the low costs at, at Lacroma. So it's 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 more uh, about, uh, I guess, um, wanting to, to add value while we've got the time at relatively low cost. So these projects, there's a fair bit of exploration to data to go through at Reynolds Range. Um, we, we want to have... Um, I guess new new projects that are sitting there in the sidelines that are ready to go. Um, if um, you know for whatever reason, um, the chroma doesn't doesn't meet the criteria that that, that we're looking at. Now, it's, there's a very slim chance of that, we believe. But we, we you know, I think it's it's um, it's the the duty of every junior explorer to have a pipeline of projects that that that, that are ready to go that you can tap onto. You know, as um, the flavors of, of markets changes. Now, now, heaven forbid that, you know, the, the graphite market stays depressed for a long time. Um, then we, we, you know, we've got something that we can, we, we can look at. Um, and, and talking to a lot of the, I guess, uh, investors on a daily basis, they want to see us have that, that kind of approach. Well, well, what next? You know, we don't want you to be a, a one hit wonder. Um, what, what, what can you, you jump to and, and bring forward if, um, the market's not going to support you developing Lacroma. Now, you know, w- when I look at the at the metrics for the graphite markets, they, they haven't really changed. You know, that I don't know of any other commodity where they're projecting anywhere between three to six to seven times increased demand in, you know, in battery materials. Um, you look at nickel, you look at copper, you look at those things, it's just they're not the same. But there's been a little bit of bad news that maybe some of the American car manufacturers aren't going to, um, produce quite as as many you know electric vehicles and um and the, and the market reacts that way and the market always has swings and roundabouts you know it, it goes up and down um from from overly positive to negative and it finds some sort of median um i i think we're on the way back up for graphite um you know um i i believe we're, we're coming back from quite negative sentiment up to positive as the market starts to realize that that demand is going to be there and it's going to be sustained and and china's not going to be able to keep delivering the amount of synthetic graphite into the market at the at the prices that it has been so you know i believe that the, the price is going to continue to improve um and and, and with that you know 
the, the interest will, will come back onto to La Croma. But our duty of care to our shareholders is to manage the, the downside. And, and that's what that that acquisition is all about. So sorry for the very long-winded answer. No, it's good. But, um, <laughs> but, but that, that's our focus and that's, that's how we're looking at it. Yeah, I think it kind of stuck a tough question in there at the end there, so spontaneously too. So thank you for that, the, the, the appropriate answer, the effective answer. And I think, I mean, not to not to talk on too long here, but I think you discussed, you know, the, the, the pendulum swings of sentiment that always react and overreact. And I think that as investors in this, I, I fundamentally believe this, that you almost have to be a counterweight, right? And when you see uh, situations like graphite, where it is just kind of moribund or almost seems like it's on life support, it's never going it, to, and, and, and people are writing, you know, their requiems for graphite in the newspapers. That's exactly when you should be looking to invest because it, it it's never the end, right? The graphic, like you said, 7X demand over the next 10, 20 years, that's not going away. And, and, and you know, yeah. you talk about EVs slowing, it's still exponential growth, just a slightly lower exponent, right? And so I think that if you're listening to this, you know, that that, that fear of, oh, graphite's cold or it's dead, I, that, 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 that is, that's exactly uh, when money is made in this in this market, right? So. Oh, look, 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 ab- absolutely. And, you know, and, and that's where I think iTech is well placed because we're doing the hard yards now. And we, you know, ha- we have the cash in the bank to, to, to get that resource out there and, and, to, and to show the economics of the project at a, at a time when, you know, um, I, I guess other companies might be stepping away from graphite. So we're still pushing through getting, getting that, that, that hardcore information, um, to feed into the feasibility studies. So, uh, you know, if, if and when it comes back, we can be there to shine at the right time and and really show the value for for iTech and the investors. Yeah, it's the companies that survive the downturn that that survive to the end of it that shine the most, right? And not the ones that are the Johnny Come Latelys. Uh, we've just passed the one hour mark, so I'll probably try to put a pin in it now. Uh, any final thoughts to you, Mike? Anything that maybe I missed that you think we should talk about briefly? No, no, I, I'm really glad we've covered uh, a lot of information, <laughs> and you know, I, I really thank you for being able to be able to put my point of, point of view across. I know a lot of people really do appreciate your long form um, interviews um, and be able to get you know the, the details and get um, information directly from from people by myself, and and I really appreciate being able to talk directly to the investors through yourself as well so you know i've really enjoyed i I can't believe it's been an hour um (laughs) (laughs) so yeah i i appreciate the the time you've taken matthew to talk to me today no, and thank you, Mike. You, you definitely developed a, a loyal uh, shareholder base, and, and I think it's obvious when you let people listen to you speak why that happens. So, uh, yeah, Mike Schwartz, uh, iTech Minerals, itm.ax on the ASX. Uh, yeah, thanks for your time, Mike. And until next time. Excellent. Thanks, Matthew.